wholeness and balance vibration and welcome to the Universal Current Show. This is episode 7. Today is Sunday, November 20th, 2011. And today's show is titled, Climbing the Ladder of Life, or more simply, Climb Your Spine. And I've just been having an awesome time with everyone and giving this information to everyone, and so much has been coming in, especially this week and between last show about things to talk about and explain just from that connection that I've established with the universe, and it's just wonderful to be in this relationship. And I really wanted to do my best today at getting clarity to everyone so that they can also enjoy this exuberant amount of energy and to flow. And the main thing that I think that we should talk about first, because I noticed that for the last uh, two weeks, three weeks, we've been moving pretty fast. I mean, we're already on episode seven. Um, and, you know, we're right now on level one, which I call it, like the shift is hovering lightly over the ground, people are boarding, you know, they're greeting, there's kissing going on, there's all sorts of stuff, as everyone's happy that they've arrived to this point. And, of course, we're bringing more people on board as we continue, and when we start to raise the ship, as we call it, which is raise our energy from the base of our feet all the way to our crown chakra and learn how to cycle that, then... That's what, I mean, of course, that's what we're doing, and that's when everyone gets the opportunity to enjoy that is when I'll be happy completely. Today, I wanted to um, right away get into this, the, how to operate on your body. And this is very important because people have to remember only you can master yourself. And also, you should only want to master yourself. Mastering other people and things of that may well end up causing you problems, and I'll show, I'll show you that through the duration of this show. So when you go to work on yourself, it's good to have categories. This is like what I call my brain. I say I explain my brain like it's organized with Tupperware. There's I know where everything is and there's nothing bleeding over into something else and that way when I want to go and find something I know exactly where it is and it's very smooth. This is how you have to order your body. And notice the term order means like you give your body an order. And that's what we're going to be talking about most on today's show. That is the frequency of today's show is how to command the body, which is the universe. And then that command that you give to the body responds to your external universe, which comes after. Like you'll learn after this conversation also that the external world is to your benefit because it allows you to see what you did. Other than, and it, it, you make mistakes as you would call them, but it's really you just getting better at what you do. And so when it's out in front of you and you experience that, that's what the external world has actually allowed you to do. Uh, I'm going to need everyone to hold on for a quick second. I'm in a room with uh, another machine that's in here that seems to be cranking out a certain kind of frequency. So let me just unplug it really quickly. Okay, I do apologize for that. There was like a larger uh, cooler or something going on, and I guess the fan was making some weird frequency. So um, <laughs> getting to, to where I exactly am on this is that basically you have to order your body to begin to do things that actually allow your external reality to morph into the way that you want it. And so that's what we're going to talk about. So now you have this mental, spiritual and physical body. This is the easiest way to separate it. And you now have to activate Kundalini in each of those bodies. And this is going to be really one of the first times that I've seen Kundalini completely pulled apart from different levels so that everyone can enjoy it. When you read past novels and ancient works on Kundalini, because of the sacredness of Kundalini, it's very seldom that the message of what to do with it and how to act with it. And all of that is transcended from the language that uh, it was written in into our English. So this, of course, is the explanation of Kundalini from the Western point of view, but the purified Western point of view, let's just say that. So 
when you look at what is mental kundalini, mental kundalini is when you don't have duality. Your mind never trips on itself. It never uh, looks at something separate than what it is. Physical kundalini means to be able to have your body in the shape where it responds to whatever it is you want to, re run it to respond to. If you want it to run a mile, it will run the mile. It's then the condition of the body after it ran the mile that is only in question. Like if the legs are swollen after that because the person is, is of a larger size, but they still possess the ability to command their body to even run a mile without stopping, Notice, what I'm explaining here is that there are people that understand the real mind over matter technique, and thus if they're skinny, if they're fat, if whatever their, their status is, if the skinny guy's got to go and lift two, three hundred pounds, there is a level of mind over matter or mental kundalini that that individual can lift at, no problem. And especially when all of his bodies are working in conjunction. And there's a chart of this, and I'll put it on the resistance, but you notice there are three, there's two channels of the Kundalini, and there's one pole in the middle. So this signifies there are really three systems that you need to be operating to be fully powered up. And so activating mental Kundalini helps, but it does not work very well if spiritual Kundalini is not active. And then physical kundalini has to come into play at some point if the person wants to really progress far on this external dimension because it requires the physical. So why this dimension requires the physical? Is everything about this dimension is the legs. Like once you understand the universal map, which is basically your body, you understand that the legs are the dual plane. And it's interesting because all you have to do is start to sit and think about how your body is designed and you come into the highest level of part of the book. Because how the leg behavior is is a positive and a negative. One foot walks out in front of the other as if it says, I'm first. And then the other foot says, no, I'm first. And then we call that walking. This is how the dual plane actually um, how can I put it? The dual plane propels existence and propels the higher being. Because your body's a master universe, what you'll notice is the higher states of consciousness are connected to the crown chakra in that area, which is very arid, very sunny. That area in the crown chakra is still connected to the feet. But the feet are responsible for carrying basically the crown chakra being around. So do you see how if you looked at the universe and you started to think of it as external and you say, okay, well, there's higher beings, there's different kind of entities and things of this nature, then the highest one, in retrospect, would be riding on top of us. And sure enough, that is the mystery of the Sphinx, that the lower dual plane or the two uh, states, uh, the mystery of the tarot card, uh, the chariot, excuse me, the chariot, you'll see there are two Sphinx driving the magician. What this means is, is that the dual Black, and there's generally one black one and one white one, and they're always put in opposite colors. The dual plane drives the higher being. So you can decide whether or not you want to work in the dual plane, be basically be like in your leg state of mind, or you rise to a higher state of consciousness and operate your facilities there. Notice I didn't say, or you can just leave your legs. Remember, the energy is the focal cycle. But you can choose to operate in the higher state of consciousness on all of your faculties. And, and let's talk about that. Basically, what our glands show that the glands are in control of what's going on in our body and what fluids are going in what places. And we have identified that the pineal gland is calcified, but there's also more information about other glands that are not functioning properly. And this is why even when activating a pineal gland, the person is able to have a very um, intense visual perspective and their, their dreams clear up and things of this nature. However, there's other glands in which they need to activate. So in order to activate, a rule of thumb in, of, in order to activate these hidden glands, the ones that are not even talked about, was 
what was known as a purifying fire, which has a lot of Kundalini, but it, it's not just Kundalini, it's the state that the Kundalini fluid is in. And so then I basically cracked into the mystery of why you see these ancient people worshiping fire, and in some sense they were calling them sun worshipers. Because there was a knowledge that the fire that they're talking about is not the fire that comes out of your butane lighter. The fire that they're talking about is more associated with the heat and the intensity of the sun, which they say doesn't even burn. And the reason why the sun is called soul is because they already knew 100% that the soul inside of our body was made up of the same elements that make sun. And that's why our body is warm. And if the spirit chooses to leave the body or leave the body, then the body gets very cold. So that fire, that was the fire that the Persians were talking about and these different groups of individuals that were talking about that. Now they have someone else interpreting what they meant, and then they've taken it into a vulgar um, aspect or a, a verbal, a, a verbal, a, a, verbal um, a vulgar context. And so this is what really happens when you just don't take it literally. You also put it into duality. This is how some of the stuff is getting interpreted and then written about. And this is the problem with duality. With duality, there's separation. And if you understand wholeness, then anything that you separate from takes away from you. And I'll say that again. Anything that you separate from or you choose that you're separate from, it takes away from you because you're everything. So you have to decide how much you want to keep taking away from yourself. That's what this is all about now. And if you end up taking too much, don't be surprised if you end up with nothing. Because what I discovered is that religion is simply what you don't like. That's what you don't like becomes your religion. Like the popular religion uh, today, which is Christianity, is uh, human haters. They don't like humans. The entire Bible is constructed for there to be one particular chosen group, and then the rest of them can go to waste. So just human hating. Then there's other books that I found that were reptile haters. And I even wrote a partial reptile hater book. Then there are bird hater books, though. I just recently picked up a few of those. And then, of course, the planet hater books. So I started to realize that all this was going to end up becoming where you were going to eventually strip yourself of everything that you really are if you keep separating. Now, it is true. There needs to be another definition of much of this spiritual work. It has to be redefined and given its glory back. And the interesting part about this is, is that language has a lot to do with that. Language has a lot to do with when you can expand something in your mind or where, when it continuously contracts. And, and I'll explain this just from the simple fact that when you talk to yourself in your mind, what language do you speak? You speak your native language, whether it's English or Spanish or whatever, you speak that into yourself, like, hey, man, I don't know. I don't think you should go over there. That's now English you're using to talk to yourself. So you can see how the language that was given to the people had everything to do with how far they could really communicate with themselves. And what I found in history was is that, yes, the languages had a very high level. It, they were condensed. That's what they were. They had a lot of expression, but because the people were so busy in conflict with one another, they never really were able to unpack the language, for better like a word. It remained zipped. And it remained zipped in their minds, and the reason why they had such a hard time unpacking it is because if you look at the last 2,000 years, even 3,000 years, the whole world has been in turmoil. There has been one ruler after another ruler, one group of government after another group of government, totalitarian, slave gods. There's been so much of that. I really mark this as one of the only segments. People, we only live 72 years approximately anyway. 
So this is really your first time coming into a world where there it wasn't really dictated for you, as if you were operating on instinct, what you should and should not do. There's now variety being provided to you. I suggest one should seize the moment, break the shackles completely off of themselves of these dualistic interpretations of everything. This is what we're here to do. So notice, I'll show you how duality was always best fit. Both sides. Because the one pole is corresponds to the masculine, very arid, what they call positive, sunny, very light. The other pole was feminine, moist, dark, and fertile. So you can see that if you're in the desert, like if you know you're wearing a turban and you're out there, you're on your masculine thing, do you not load for a glass of water? So that's really the positive and negative that we're talking about, people. We're not talking about Crowleyism. We're not talking about all of the, the misinterpretations that have continued to happen with the world. Remember, the world has to go through its misinterpretation process, and it's in the middle of that right now. That's what the Occupy Wall Street and all this stuff is really about, because people are misunderstanding what the meaning to life really is, which is not about the external world. It's about the internal world, and then when you get your internal world in order, you affect everything on the external world around you. Now, how this works is you're not in the smack dab in the middle of New York City living in a condo where the rent is, you know, high and blah, blah. You're not living in the, the hood over where someone's always creeping through late at night and encouraging you to do different things that you don't want to do. That's what it means to transform your inner bird is that you seek to become a part of those environments, but it doesn't mean those environments won't remain there. Because that is the parallel world that they're talking about. The parallel world are when you can jump into the person probably next to you and live a life as if everything was the same except they made one decision, or they were male and you're female, or they made right and you made left. That's what the parallel worlds were, and I saw this this morning in, in my sleep. There were some beings there that were attempting to convince me very heavily to explain that the, the major reason why most of this is going on without people knowing it is because the ones that are doing it, and that's all it said, the ones that are doing it are invisible. And because people, but they can be sensed, but they cannot be seen. And because people always want to see as a confirmation of anything, they want to use their eyes. Although a person that doesn't have eyes has another level that they need, that they use to confirm. Meaning that if you're two eyes, if you're expecting them to confirm to you, because remember they're dual, so there's, there's something they're not seeing. And that's why that third eye exercise makes you cross them until they focus in between. And then if you hold that for a while, then you can start to see other things. So the dual Listic eyes cannot see the invisible forces. And now let's talk about where these invisible forces come from, how are they affecting us, etc., etc. Our life has been lived. Since we have not been informed about this, what we're talking about now, we've lived in a basic free-for-all. This has been looked at in the sovereign law, etc., that you're set up to get charges, statutes, like just when, if you get one like a lot of people have citations now because they uh, were occupying Wall Street. At least a thousand people now have been arrested, so they all have citations. So with those citations, those citations are broken up within three uh, courts of law. There's, a, there's statutes, there's citations, there's all these different things. So basically these are other entities, as they call themselves, getting paid your energy because you have to work to make money and it's all tied into your current. So what this really would look like on a higher spiritual standpoint would be you have all these things that are seeking to get energy from you and you're even to the level because of how much energy they've taken that you don't even know that they're doing it or that that's what that really is when someone charges you or gives you a penalty. 
all of these words do mean something. And it's funny because some people are starting to go back and forth with me about the etymology, explaining to me that there's no cohesiveness between the ancient languages and the modern languages today. Those people need to understand, you're highly mistaken. The matrix never came unwound. It never really, it only expanded more into what it really was. It never lost its original meaning. That's really how practice works. And so we have to now understand the difference between acting like the masses versus acting ethereal. Look at what the terminology is saying. You can either make up the masses. Mass is heavy, it's dense, it's moving slow. Honestly, I mean, if you really look at the word mass, it has everything to do with the rear end of, of the feminine component, which a lot of people are in love with right now. The reality of mass is that it moves very slow. It is a nurturing component. It remains compact. It's very warm, and it's a very habitable place for those who have just started to understand that they're on mind. You're inside of the womb or the matrix. So when one starts to push through into the higher territories, you first of all have to understand that they're even there, but this starts to take place within your body. So the first thing that you have to do is you have to get your legs moving. Like if you notice, how many people run these days? How many people even do, if you have a Stairmaster, go do the Stairmaster, or just simple uh, squats? Why is that? I'm going to tell you why. Why most people don't like to work out the legs. Because the legs are conscious. Now, when we say we are all one, it's easy for me to show you, yes, we're all one, just like our human body is one body, but... We have liver, we have spleen, we have kidney, we have heart, and so we have all these separate organisms that allow the one to function. So when we start to talk about things as separate, this is what we're doing. I'm explaining to you leg mentality. Leg mentality is uh, we don't like to do anything. We don't like to walk. We'd rather use the wheel. We'll get in the car and or the ark and y'all could, you could just drive us around. So now we're driving the legs around. We don't want to walk anymore. So then what ends up happening is that the legs get into a jam where they have no choice but to, to, uh, to exercise themselves. Guess who they like to call? Arms. Arms help us. Now, what does arms mean? Arms is like a, a gun, like you know, my, mil my military arms, my armament, my armor, okay? So the leg will call the arms, and this is just like the mentality of the dualistic plane. The moment that the pressure gets a little bit too much, for them, they'll call their flip-flop partner arms and start to, you know, use arms to go into more conflict. So if you sandwich the body in half, what you would see is how when this dodecahedron pentagram thing unfolds and folds itself up and makes several of itself in different places. And this is also the key to bring it all back together and then, like I talk about in that poem, one key unlocks all the gates. So it's very interesting. Like when you really look at the body, it's all there. And so what you have to do is that your ground has a lot to do with it. Like I said, if I can kick right where your feet are and you know you would just fall, that means that's your root. Versus some people are very planted, not, not, as, not as extreme as a sumo wrestler, but at least some of the Thai boxers, et cetera, those individuals are very planted in the ground. That's the term, planted. It's because that ground core connection is not just because of... Um, it also has a lot to do with the magnetism, and that's also what I wanted to talk about in regards to fire. Fire is another kind of a magnet. Again, people are lost in interpretation. When you see, when they say magnet, you see in your mind the actual magnet, or what they're calling it, something that attracts. Even though neodymium is a magnet, and it doesn't attract to what you can feel, but if you're holding it in your hand, you feel it all through your teeth, you feel it everywhere. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, business, not neodymium. Business is a magnet that does not attract. But when you touch them together, you can feel it all in your mouth and all in your head that they've made a connection. 
So, fire is the same way in different kinds of fire. And because the spirits are fire, that's how we're actually attracting each other. That is the key element that actually pulls us together with people that we are like. So you can see there's different grades of fire, and those different grades are based on how much the body is actually working. So if the body is very sluggish, it likes to dump all of its weight off on the mind. This is some of, sometimes when a person has a job and all they have to do is use the computer, but so their whole life is encompassed around the computer. You've got to take an hour and send that thing to the gym. You have to actually tell the body, uh, you have to have a real direct conversation like you're talking to yourself. Like, look, you, you've done enough. You've got to clean yourself up. This is all going too far. There's a new thing going on. People have to understand that this is a new thing, this ethereal idea. But people should not be afraid of the new things because they come anyway. Tell the people from the Stone Age, the Space Age is about to be coming in the, in a few uh, thousand years, and they're looking at you like, whoa, what do you mean? <laughs> but, and that's how it is sometimes when I explain to people, it's like, look, man, it's about to go hyperdimensional any moment for you, because they're already being hyperdimensional, and I'm one of them. Now, the most important thing is, is that you have to understand that you're controlling your world. You've always been controlling your world, but what you've been being coerced to manifest is what you're seeing around you. So don't be surprised that if, if it's not what you want. So how this works is, like, say, for instance, TV makes a liquor ad, and they say the liquor is, you know, what you need. And that's the program, and it's suggestive, but it still requires you to make the choice. Then once you drink the liquor, and then you get up the next morning, and then you look at your pH balance, and then you look at your energy, et cetera, then you realize that it was a bad choice. But there was no harm, no foul, because you made that choice. And that's how the universe works. So what we have this opportunity to do is we have this opportunity to go into our body and understand, hey, I've been manifesting all this stuff. I've just been manifesting suggestively. People have been suggesting to me what I should manifest. So now I'm taking that back, since I know I'm manifesting everything, and I'm going to start really cleaning the slate and manifesting things that I actually want to manifest. So I believe many of the people on the line have already done that, and that's why we're talking today, because don't get it confused. There's not a lot of people that know about what we're sharing here and what we're talking about here. There's a very small amount of people in our network because most people in their fears find it somewhat repugnant. So what happens is, is that you manifested me. You have to understand that. And knowing more about who I am allows you to know more about what your desires for manifestation really are. Now, what I'm sitting on top of is a powder keg of information, knowledge, application, etc. It being introduced into this world will change this world entirely. It's completely foreign to what this world has seen thus far, because it's not duality. If someone can give you the knowledge of how to eliminate duality, and it really works, not just say, hey, you got to not be dual, <laughs> but really show you step by step and walk with you and show you how to move from the dual state into the state of collectiveness. That's the most important thing that you could ever learn while being on this planet. So that makes me to you the real morphic. Fias is just thought, more means black. So black thought, meaning the dark matter thought of the space, the unknown that passes through the beaker, which means, which is basically what we're always talking about. Things that make perfect sense, but it's like everyone else hasn't talked about it yet. And it's because they're veiled. I'll explain this to you. There are higher beings here. When they say they veil something, they're not playing with the humans, meaning that the humans cannot, that, are, that, that have not activated and have not started to work with their body and their system, they cannot see or know what's really going on. Even if you were screaming it right in front of their face, giving them all the posts, etc., they wouldn't see what you saw. That's what it means to be veiled. So thus, most of the individuals that have been coming and bringing information don't know anything because they skip over 
the first thing that should have been uh, looked at, which was the relationship between this planet and the planets that are adjacent to it, the relationship between the pentagram and why every single army on this planet has it incorporated in what they do, et cetera, et cetera. And so this is why this makes this news, because people have detoured around that for one reason or another, most of the time because they think it's not important. And that's how something veiled at. It's like invisible to everything else. Most people, they look right over it. Okay, so let's just get this really clear. So the other thing is, is that I wanted to, uh, towards the, a little bit towards the end of the show, we're going to start doing this, not only this show, but the next shows, and that basically the posts that are on the resistance that come through, we're going to start dissecting a couple of those posts, especially of stuff that other people post, so that that way we have, you know, the, the real content of real time of what people are talking about so they can get a lot of clarity because most of the time I don't have an opportunity to answer stuff right away. So I get a chance to see generally a post four or five comments later. And it's very interesting to me of, of how things are progressing, but I did want to spend the show, some of the show time and actually pulling that stuff apart. Also, I want to let everyone know that if you have any questions, you can actually call in. The call-in is area code 213, actually, sorry, it's area code 347-996-5688. That's area code 347-996-5688. Put you on the air in the universe current, and you can ask any question in the universe and actually get an answer to that. Um, I'm kind of taking a brief break here for a minute to go over my notes because we just covered a lot. And the main thing is that you have to understand that you've got to come out of duality. Duality, coming out of duality gives you the key. It allows you to be, it allows you to enter into a state of your consciousness where you don't have limitations. These limitations don't just manifest as, oh, where I can't go and why I can't control my dream. They also manifest of why I can't even think outside the box. Remember, there's a major level of programming that has always been happening here, and many people are already under that programming. To assume that one is not is even to be in a worse state because that would basically not allow you to hear and fix the problem. To hear and fix the problem, you have to bring these bodies, the mental, the spiritual, and the physical body, in union with another, one another. There is a separation within the body, just as you see with all the organs, and there's some glands that are just like, I'm not dealing with them anymore. That's when people have a, a calcified pineal gland or pineal gland that's not working. It's because the pineal gland has chosen not to work. It's not that, ah, oh, because they put fluoride in my water, blah, 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 blah. Look, you're on a dual plane. That's the whole thing to the dual plane. Everything external must be almost in contrast to what's going on internally. If the two ever start to appear the same, then one, they basically eliminate each other. And that's why they said that you can't put two of the, you can't send two of the same people back in time or something like this. And when they would meet each other, they would just cancel each other out. Or if a person from the past met the person in the future, they would cancel each other out. This is because the two poles would cancel each other or short-circuit each other out. This is the same thing that happens when a person goes into dualistic thought. They get into this higher plane. They start to really, really uh, uh, understand the energy. And then all of a sudden, they start to think and judge the energy. And then from this moment, everything starts to short-circuit from there. And the person feels themselves coming down. It disappears. And then, you know, they're back to square one again. That's what I was saying about there's a major pulse in the resistance now called decalcifying the pineal gland. There's a lot of good information in there. But there's people that want to know, okay, so when I decalcify my pineal gland, then boom, then am I going to awake? This is the thing. What you will experience is, in high, is heightened dreams and the ability to, when you close your eyes, you'll see a cornucopic field that looks like the bottom of a pine cone. I think they call those convex triangles or there's another word that means when they pop out, but and then there's another word when they curve in. But that field is what you see, and then as that field is there, it, you can twist it. It's like a step-by-step -step one of what you see, what you see. When you close your eyes, you see this cornucopic field. 
generally, if you have any other light source like the sun, it'll be almost rainbow, meaning like anything can come out of it. Versus if you're in a darker area, it looks like um, like a glow in the dark, light and black. So it's like a glow, a glowing white and a black, but still that same cornucopic field that seems to be. Um, I'm looking for the word, but it's basically the field is, is compressing into itself. When you spin, you can spin that field through a thought, and then what you'll notice is portals begin to open. And generally what you get from these portals, and this is just like if you're doing it, is you start getting information and hearing information, almost as if you're turning a dial. And then the other nature is to be able to tap into one of your organs and then have that organ send the signal of it send its signal into the cornucopic field, which would basically put you onto the consciousness of the planet that corresponds to the organ in which you're vibrating. Now, the organ, how they work is that they're very similar to the planet because, I mean, they're very similar to our planets because, for better lack of words, they have not merged with the sun. They look for power from the sun. And it's very interesting to, to really understand this, but if you understand, like, if a planet just decides to go right into the sun, it will become consumed by the sun. So all the planets that are outside the sun have some other type of status or rank or they're different. So what happens is, is that that gets us into this next question that came up on the resistance are we facing. And I did actually answer that question, and I remarked that basically, I, I'm sure everyone understands at this point that Satanism is the understanding of the sixth part of Saturn. Um, Saturn is divided between two numbers, six and seven. So Satanist practice number six concept, which is basically the eating of the tail, if you notice the sun, the, our actual physical sun is either in some type of tint of a younger version of what Saturn was. Saturn was, was a sun. And the reason why it contains that, that uh, hexagon field is because if you anyone takes a photo of the sun, they can see the sun turns out to be a hexagon or a Merkaba. So these are somehow through the sixth motion, which uh, uh, Willem pointed out was energy, through that motion, that's what you see as that big powering thing. But something. So basically they're saying it's pull, pulling in energy and then pushing it back out. And that's also why people feel very tired when they're uh, being soaked by the sun because it's pulling the energy out. But it's also emanating that energy back into the earth in order to grow the plant. Man does this also when he eats the plant and then he draws all the energy from the plants and the things that he's eating and then he makes the semen, which are, again, living beings all over again, and that's man's womb. So this is the whole nature of the, the Satanism, uh, but that's the sixth side. The seventh side is the scythe, which means that now once that process has happened of purification, something has to come in and determine which ones actually got purified and which ones need to go back again. So the sixes work with the sevens. And a lot of people... Uh, in the ancient times, or not even in ancient times, but in the old times, used to have a saying that said, I have my sixes with my sevens. So, but that, that's that. But that's only one planet in the universe full of planets, infinite planets to be exact. And there's the Venusian, and then there's the Martian concept, which we, in the, in the course of the Hermetic philosophy from Mercury, which is Buddha. So we have a lot of stuff going on as far as the university of the world and, and the, uh, the universe and what we know. So the question is, no, we're not Satanists. We're universalists. We have all the knowledge of all these planetary systems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a quick moment to take a break. We're about halfway through. Uh, I'm going to give everyone an opportunity to think about what was said earlier in this. I really want to, I'm going to come back and I'm going to explain some of this new stuff that we're going to be uh, doing here within the next two weeks because I've, personally made a pledge to myself to go at it three times harder than I'm doing now, which is going to be just incredible, but I'm going to push myself to the limit so that way we can get a lot more going on as far as the format of how we're presenting this information because few people get a chance to see me except for in their sleep. And other than that, it's like we need to really get on the camera more to get this information compressed. I want to also begin to do the actual University of the World course which actually starts with Earth, and then we move up from there to the moon, and then we move up, I believe, to Venus, and then we move up to Mars. But each of what we do is 
all of what we do is we under, let the person understand what these planets which are inside of them emanate and what is basically the cream of that and then what should be, what is the cliff off, which is uh, what is the drawback of that. And then that will give everyone a better opportunity in order to activate their beam. And I'm telling you here right now that there's something very special about the segment of life this planet is in. And I talked about a little bit about parallels. Uh, earlier, but you should understand that the moment that you make the real decision, not the one that I'm thinking about, it, but the one, the real decision, which the higher beings can see on the timeline of getting yourself to a higher state of consciousness, then it becomes available for you. That's how it works. And then you are, you are transported. Once you show that you're diligent in just seeking yourself, you are transported from your current state of environment, consciousness, etc., into one that corresponds with your switch. What we've done is we provided a plethora of information here about how to make that happen, but people need to understand that we're basically almost diagnosing some of the most important things over the over this channel and through the website. So I don't have the opportunity all the time to actually look at a person and see what they may be um, what they may be lacking. However, what we do do is we, we have more or less an array of things for everyone that will work with them in their life. And that's also why we put the Ayurvedic blood purifier is because the only supplements that I really want on the resistance it has nothing to do with how many supplements we have up there, but it has everything to do with if each part of the body is targeted, the most important parts are targeted. Because if you look at the important things in this world, you can get very far. And the important things are breathing, perfect almost from breathing. Because if you can't breathe, it's all over. The sun, it's nothing to breathe. It's nothing to drink. It's all frozen. Water, so when we go to these and then we start pulling those apart from esoteric levels, you're gonna get you're gonna get freedom. You're gonna get emancipation. There's nothing that can stop it. So I'm gonna take a quick moment and then I'm gonna come back. I'm going to talk about, uh, Ford, as I always say, I'm going to talk about a couple more things, and I'm also going to talk about this new lifestyle program in which uh, Dave Mathematics will be participating in. A couple of resistance members also will be participating, and then we'll just keep spanning it out from there. And so I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit of whole music on here, and uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in to the Universal Okay, we are Ford, and it looks like we will probably be breaking up show up into about three segments today, so we'll take a, a little break a little bit later on. Um, also, just to let everyone know, I see a few people have called in. You can press one if you do have any questions, and we will start taking those questions uh, in a little bit. Also, in the chat box, uh, there is a question in here, and I want to go ahead and get right to that. Um, but before I do that, I just want to let everyone know that this is really the opportunity to to really be direct. Like if you have something that you know you're stuck on and you just want a direct solution for that, it may not even have anything to do with the highest level of ascension and getting yourself onto, you know, totally activated, etc. It may be something that is very simple and personal to you. The one thing that I noticed is like the post you count the the meal gland, it has almost like a thousand views. And there are some of the posts that I put on the resistance and they're, you know, I think they're phenomenal posts, but they have like maybe 200. And then I started to realize one major thing is that sometimes we can still not do a good job at landing on the ground and picking people up because the thing is, is that that's what it is with our energy. That is the problem, is the individuals who do get on this high state of consciousness, they forget that they're supposed to cycle the energy because then when you come back down, for better lack of words, with all the treasures that you have gained from your cycle, you spread it out to the people on the dual plane. How this will work is that once you cycle the energy all the way up, it comes back down the spine, then it goes to the back part of the leg, and all of those that have been working get, um, they get basically their, um, I'm going to look for the, the talents or the, what they call the trifold spirits. Basically, they get glory, power, honor, riches. This is how you reward the dual plane of your mind for choosing to work its way out of duality 
by understanding how everything works together. If one of the integers are removed, and the only problem is that's been happening is there's been a lot of stuff introduced recently into our psyche. Uh, even the possibility of uh, the alien without understanding what the alien really is and the possibility of harp and these type of things and watching the people die on TV and all that is a lot to be introduced to. People have to really, really see what's happened to the mind. And then when you start seeing what happened, what's happened to it, then at that point you, of course, don't let it make any decisions in that condition. You see how you then rise to what they call the keeper or the crown of yourself, and you get back on the throne, and you begin to command your body. See, where it started to get externalized and where people started having the whole phobias about those kind of conversations about commanding things and stuff like that, because so when someone comes out and does that in the external reality, of course, everyone's like, oh, my goodness. You know, he's trying to enslave me, it's flaring everywhere, etc. But this is about you doing it inside of your body and speaking to it and giving it command because that's what we're here to do. Um, okay, so to get right into these questions. The question was, two previous shows you ago, you talked about getting silky and magnetic hematite. What is the purpose of these items? And you also mentioned a yoga pose called the master's pose. Can you explain how to do this? Okay, so what's basically happened is that since I realized the level of information that was actually coming across and what we were about to do, I had the deepest thought first to make sure that everyone was removed from duality. That would be my purpose as, uh, as under, understanding it to the dynamic that I do. And so we talked about the magnetic hematite, which is mainly related to how to build up more or less uh, man, how to build up the magnetic field, how to give something to the magnetic field that it can basically uh, generate itself with. Now, remember, the body is actually spinning at all times. So any time you grab a stone or put a stone close to you, your energy then starts to spin around it. The unfortunate part is, is that if these items become decharged by the individual, then they either must be buried and charged again, or the individual definitely must learn how to cycle energy uh, with the crystal, which is only the main context. It is not even trying to make the crystal or communicate with the crystal. The main context is having an energy field. The entire reality is built with, to destroy a person's energy field, so the actual duality is what's doing it. So thus, when a person grabs a crystal, they don't feel what's there versus if you're on a high frequency, you don't really touch anything because you know you're going to feel everything that has ever been there. And so, this is a, so I, I will talk about this, but I think we're going to be probably on the next show at level two, which is where we're going to get more into the actual applications of how to raise Kundalini. So, that magnetic hematite and that silk uh, piece of fabric will be in use then. And I'll just leave it like that. As far as the master's pose, what I've done is now I have a green screen here, and it's been hooked up and everything now. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be showing this, because I explained it that last show. I did the best that I could, considering that, you know, I'm trying to explain how to do something physical over the air. And it doesn't, you know, it's also a new kind of thing, so a person has to get a good visualization on it. So what I'm going to do is, Probably this week, I've got some people coming in that are going to, of course, help more with uh, some of the workload and things that I have going on, but I should be able to get in front of the green screen and show the master's poll by the end of next week, and that will also really course on great with our second level, which is how to work with energy building techniques. Um, I have one here that's uh, asking about the law of attraction. Is it possible to manifest money quickly on this plane? If, if so, then if so, then how? Okay. Um, I love this kind of question because it, I love the direct question. How to manifest money? Like we talked about, money is currency. It's actually false currency, so it's the externalized version of your internal currency. So from that level, the way to actually manifest currency is you bring up the energy levels of your body. 
the first thing that this journey starts with, because there's now, like, remember, the body has now set itself up in regions. You can look at it just like Earth. The feet are what you need to talk to first, because they're the ones getting you around. And they're also the ones that are tired of doing the work. And this is funny, because the whole story of the body, as I've been looking at it, kind of sums up to the Anunnaki story. Like, the story of our Earth and stuff sums up to, like, an inner, inner, internal version of the Anunnaki story. That basically, let's say, the legs when created, they had to do all the work to carry everything around. And then after a while, they stopped wanting to work. And that's kind of like the reality that we're living in now, where the society doesn't want to work for the parliament anymore because of what they're doing. So, but this is still the flaw. This is according to whatever being is controlling this particular reality we're in. When we're in that state of mind, when we come out of that state of mind, we come back on throne as the being that's commanding all of these quadrants and stations and regions, and we decide that there's going to be unity within the land. This is like a literal. This is when the maculate sits within the solar plexus of the chest and begins to command all of what's going on with the body. This is what the Tibetans and the Hindus really, really know about how, but you have to develop um, that that being that says, hey, get up, man, what are you doing? Why are we asleep? All this potential. There's these trees around us, man. Let's try to figure out, didn't your buddy do chemistry? Like, let's uh, figure out, I'm just going to take a trip. Let me just go work here for a month. I'll get a check. And then I'll just go over there, and then I'll see what happens next. If it's really real, it'll take me from there. Like, it's that kind of thing. But remember, what you're coming out of is, like, you're walking out of the mass. You're walking out of the sludge. You're coming out of this, the goo, the gel, the thing that feels like when you're in a dream, that when you punch, it just doesn't punch. You're like, I can't move fast. That's matrix action. Move from that into super flux. Faster than speed, faster than light, something around faster than the speed of thought. This is where we, like I've been, and I cycle it though. Sometimes you have to go into like some of the dense states of consciousness to relate. It's like, okay, so what's going on? And he's like, okay, I see what's happened. But there's all of these Messiah resonators because because they're sons of God, daughters of God, etc. Amazon, they, this story about the Amazons is very unique. It's actually about the female giant that they never talk about. But because these children are all running around, you can look at their feet and offspring that they've left and what they're choosing to do with, the, with their power because they have no God. And also where, because the demons are blind too, so they're not the guys. If they were the guys, then they would know more than than uh than they than it's proposed that they do and they would not still be here. But like we were talking about before, the demons are nothing but divided humans. When the humans decide say, when they die, when their spirit split, then they end up in a stage where they are not fully conscious of exactly where they are. Then they look for life. And when they find life they latch a hold of it, just like um an insect would uh fly into the light. And then it transmutes them at that point. The fire transmutes. That's why the word is pure, purify. Pura or pure means fire. It also is the sound of light, which is the whole thing about what was going on with the solar thing. It's not something to just push under the carpet, but it's also something to understand who is explaining the story. Is it someone who is indigenous to that place, or is it a Turk? or an individual who had came and just accepted the religion only because they were moved into the territory and are still harvesting those territories for their resources. So this is, uh, like, that's what I mean about this whole Anunnaki thing is that the planet is still being harvested for its resources, and the planet has not been being able to utilize its resources to indemnify itself. And that's also the same thing that's taking place in the external stock market and all the rest of the financial sector. We can try all that easy. I was thinking the other day, and I said, you know, if somebody wants to get with me on this, then they can definitely hit me up on the email. We'll make a post about it and see what everyone's about. But I don't see why these people under think that if they occupy anything, if they say something, it's going to have an impact. If you're going to occupy, go sit there and meditate. You bring me 50 meditators, and you put them downtown, and you put them in a park, and they say nothing. And you put me in the middle of that group and as much energy as I can throw around, then you see if 
whatever is going on is a problem that doesn't correct itself. That's kind of what we're talking about when we do energy. Energy is has to be thought through. You have different parts of your body, so use the brain, and then also those glands that are not working, they need to be put in check. However, the first thing to do is ask yourself if you do this thing. Like, at this point, I have no choice by next week but to continue. But I will tell people now as a firm warning, if you're still in duality and you attempt to use the principles that we're going to speak of more of in the future about how to activate, you will destroy yourself. There's no way it's not going to happen. It will actually divide you and it may burn up some of your faculties. So it's that type of thing. But at the same time, I don't think we're living in an earth anymore where such principles cannot be given to those who have been waiting for it because the reality is, is that we could have ascended out of this a long time ago. Okay, so here's another cl uh, question. Um, let me read this real quick. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and uh, take any caller that we have calling. Actually, we have one caller calling in from the 202 area code. Caller, you're on the air with uh, Universal Current. My um, brother, how are you? I never asked how you are. How are you? Oh, man, I'm doing exceptionally well, exceptionally well. Oh, very good. Um, I'm very interested. I resonate when you say uh, destroy yourself because of duality. What I see in myself is I know what I like and enjoy. Right? Um, and I, I'm just, I'm in a gray area when it comes to, you know, do you leave anything behind or everything just exists in balance? I, I'm understanding triplicity more because I heard you mention it and I've been meditating on it, just what that means. It makes perfect sense to me. But I think my my conditioning is is the obstacle. And I, I just, you know, I don't need, that's just where I am right now. When I heard you say I that. Mean, I mean, okay, I want to, let's talk about that because I'm glad you brought that up because this was something that was going on in the dream this morning. And I was wondering if I should even address it on the show, but obviously it's something that should be addressed. <laughs> also, what I was explaining is, is that the chemical, the chemical that has been mixed up in a lot of our food over time has had somewhat of an enzyme behavior, in, uh, enzyme behavior to our, um, to our, our serotonin, melatonin, testosterone, etc. And let me okay. explain, let me explain that deeper. If with your enzymes, by the time a person is eight to nine years old, they lost all of their natural enzymes in their stomach because of the food, like McDonald's and different things of that nature, because it kills the natural enzymes. And so from that point, if a person has to need enzymes, then they have to actually take the, the, the actual enzymes, or else the stomach is then just doing its repair off of, I mean, it's uh, breaking down things off of acid. And so this is alchemy, right? But it actually chemi because al just means it, it means white. So when they put alchemy on there, and then it was against morchemy, which is you don't even know that word. So the thing is, is that. I would say that right now, it's all about, I can say definitely the knowledge is coming to you, but it's all about there are certain things, and maybe you just have to, you have to give me off of the line, but there are certain things that break down walls. That's why, it, that's why you always have brothers. Honestly, to tell you the truth, the interesting part about the body, you pull the heart out, and then all of that I'm separate doesn't even, you know, apply anymore. So we always have to be willing to call the dimension on that. Like, look, but still, I'm a piece of this, and if I don't function, then... And I know that this was something also within the breathing that... And I saw this on an entity level, that when you hold your breath, mm -hmm. it's almost like a demand for you to take the next breath. And if you choose to hold it still beyond that, then it becomes a plea. Notice what I said. At first... The reality appears to demand, like whatever entity or whatever is supposed to be in control. But then it's like the cowardly lion. Once you smack it, it comes, well, why did you do that? And that's where of also a lot of our guilt, like this is the guilt tree, I tell you, the G and matrix kind of sense for guilt. The reality becomes the G is the gravity, the guilt is the gravity too. What it does 
is it actually makes a person believe that whatever they did or whatever they're doing has some real ramifications to it. When the next day comes, that slate is pretty much gone and then the new one starts. But if we are keeping a personal count of it, this makes this cause a problem. One, we attempt to get paid for it. Like people really guilt, like if you notice, rappers, singers, they get up there and now all they talk about is how they got in this. It wasn't what they thought it was going to be, and now they've lost themselves. And that's like the most popular song. And then, but it's like, but it's like a, a guilt thing. Like I'm sorry. And this is where people have to are going to learn on all levels. That, okay, snap out of it. If if you understand the matrix, there's some things in here that that grow and operate in an entirely different way than you're talking about. And so what you're doing is just a part of this whole thing. Now, when you start to become conscious of it. You start to get off, you get off instinct. This is like your switch at that moment to unplug from what really you are already being told to do. And then on top, on top of that, it doesn't mean that you don't stop doing this. That's what I was going to tell people this morning. Like, man, I ascended already, but I'm still here. So notice there's the idea of ascending and being gone and you know, your stuff's gone. Generally what happens is your reality morphs in a strange way. Like I'm in, Costa Rica, like I'm from big cities, like now I'm just in the jungle, I see two cans. So it's like my my whole field changed, but my whole mind changed. And I did, when I came to this country, I tell everyone now, when I came here, I had $800. After I was working on it, I was working But I just knew, like I said, I knew if I, need, I needed it because I was, I was getting too much cycle pollution because of, I guess, the tension. And that's what I want to talk to people that have a lot of potential. Still understand, you may be under the influence of a lot of psychotropic things, and kind of psychotronic things. You just have to be aware of that. Like if you open those channels and then, so there becomes a point where you literally have to take, take it in. It's almost like you then give the body the command, like, look, you didn't have your 20,000 Aon service. You're not acting right. We've got several things that are not functioning. It's imperative for me to take you into the jungle. Because what literally happens is how physical related. And what literally happens is you get girth. Like there's a large part of us that st we have to stand firm in who we are in order for us not to just be blown away by someone else's concepts and ideas of what things really are. Even our, our own, when that mind starts to... I don't have a problem with that. It's just, for me, it is, like you said, when you smack the cowardly lion, I, I feel like my captain will, as the captain, I will run this ship. And if anybody steps out of line, you deal with the captain. So that, that's the mentality that I'm in right now. Anybody want to step to the captain? Let's see. And I'm seeing things change in my reality. Like, I, I act and I see a result. And so I know I cannot stay where I am. I must progress and I must elevate. But I'm just extremely cautious right now because I, I, I know what I know and I don't know what I don't know. And that's why well, I remember, okay, so what that means is that means there's a problem with the ground. You see what I mean? Like if you, if you're in that, if you just know, like straight up, that the foundation you're standing on is shaky, it has still, if there's two ways to approach it, actually three, you can approach it from the mind, but most of the time, the mind, we already been convinced the mind of other things that are not true. So it's kind of done until we snap back into another level of thought. But the body, you can go right at it and make those legs work out in an exercise. What do you think the exorcism is? The exorcism is, is when those, those certain faculties that do correspond to where that, you can pinpoint where that state of mind is still weak, you can strengthen that. And this is what you can do. It's like, that's what I believe the beauty of the whole thing really is, is that we have, we have such a complex thing going on, we don't even know how to operate it. It's like we just grabbed the, 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 the toy and just ran off with it and didn't get the, the instruction manual. It's really to that degree with the body. And it's very interesting to watch mainstream still take the stance that there's, if just on a public level, that there's no such thing as a chakra center, there's no such thing as any of that. That's what really makes us look at the reality to understand that either there needs to be some improvement here or you're going to drive yourself crazy anyway imagining that there's a controller. That's what the only that's the only two stances a person can really take. If they're even so the the main thing is, is but I'm the 
Yes. So what I'm, I'm saying is you I'm are. a controller. You yeah. are. You are, but in the reality that we're in, we still have yet, of course, to gain that foothold. And that's why sometimes we can just get busy. A lot of times we're working a lot on um, on ourselves, but we're like more than equipped already to go already, already start to pull people into another state of consciousness around us. And then they actually, most of the time, end up becoming the, the next key piece to our, our next solution. Because it's like it's still kind of linking up with another organ. Especially the ones that, you know, don't seem to be functioning properly. Being able to whip those people up does say to us, okay, we're getting the body working together again. I just believe that, you know, we should really look at everything as um, also our orbit. We have everything going on around us, and then we have these people that are in our orbit. And they're all, they're, all of it's still set up for you to breathe in and breathe out, brother. That's all I'm saying. It's, it's like the breathe in and the breathe out. And when we could do both of those perfectly, then we're cycling the energy. And uh, just know I'm here for you. I'm going to go ahead and take this uh, this next caller. Thank you. Also, brother, I want to do I do want to thank you again for calling in. Caller, you're calling in from the 804 area code. You're on the universal current. Okay, caller, uh, you're calling in from the 804 area code. You're on the universal current. Uh, can you hear? Yeah. Good day, man. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing exceptionally well. How are you doing? Um, I'm fine. My question is more about the mind, and uh, I don't like, I didn't finish school, I don't have any credentials or anything like that, but I'm able to access this information, and I understand when you say no Yoda, no Jedi, I understand that concept, but should I be going to like a university or something to get more of this type of information, or I mean, in the backyard and meditate? Well, I mean, I would do a fair picture of both. That sometimes when you feel like you have a decision to make, sometimes the decision is really for you to choose both so you can see what field is going to help you the most. The reality becomes is that there's a lot of information being transcribed across the course of the resistance. It is the university of the world. I don't know any real university universities that are actually teaching this kind of knowledge, but I would always say it's really good to pick up chemistry. Like if you can find some place that'll just teach you chemistry, that's really all you would need to know. It's something about there's simple there's a certain way when the mind starts to understand how to do certain things. And when he understands how to do that, that becomes it's like, okay, that's the information I'm looking for. So it's even better at times for that mind to have really nothing, no pre programming before it receives absolute truth. You see what I mean? So a person that is, that is uh, still has a good level of comprehension, but not necessarily a lot of useless data in their mind, sometimes is in a better position than the person who has read, you know, twenty or thirty thousand books, but you know has a serious situation going on with figuring out what they think about all of that. Does that make sense to you? Definitely, I can understand that. Definitely, definitely. And um, the baking soda thing, that's another thing I wanted to ask you. Like, cause I, like, I just transferred jobs. I'm a little low on funds or whatever. But um, the baking soda thing, if I decided to ingest two tablespoons a day for two weeks, what alkalinity could I be? Actually, that, that, that's not what you, what you need to do. The baking soda thing, it is definitely the, <laughs> what do you call that? The challenge, the financially challenges the depth key to ascension. I should write a book like that. <laughs> it's MMS and, baker, and MMS and baker soda. What happens is, is that uh, basically, yeah, the alkaline is very important, but of course you don't want to over alkaline. But for a body that's been on low alkaline for a long time, it, it could afford to be in a high alkaline state for a little bit in order for it to shake off a lot of the things that have accumulated within the body. So with how the baker soda works is it's more than two tablespoons. What you have to do is, uh, you know, as a grown man, you would have to get like a third, three quarters to three quarters of a pitcher, and then you add, uh, you do this in the morning. You add the baking soda, and then you add about three quarters of the pitcher full of water, and then maybe about, uh, I would say, five tablespoons or four tablespoons of baking soda. And this is, you know, like I said, it's not tasty, but it gets the job done. Then what it does is it literally. Uh, it goes in the system and you would see it literally as an oxygenating foam. And it starts to move that foam into those areas that basically haven't really been moved around or, or bubbled out in a while. And then what you'll generally do is you'll evacuate. And then the interesting part about it is you won't like have to keep, once you go, I guess maybe two or three times, 
it, that's it. You don't have to like worry about it the rest of the day. It's not something that you have to be, um, you know, like trying to plan a whole day to do. And this, what this does is it basically, man, it cleans you out. It like refreshes the body, especially if you know you've definitely eaten some things or done some things that you need to have flushed out. Um, and of course, the only drawback is the taste. Then the MMS is twenty dollars, and if you're in the U.S., uh, you can still get a hold of it. I uh, even heard uh, what do they call it? Uh, flavorless MMS coming out. And so uh, people get an opportunity to still get the MMS. It pulls the fluoride out of the water for those that are concerned about the fluoride in the water. And it also is one of the highest alkalines that I know of that are ingestible by the system. So like literally two to three drops per gallon and your water in 24 hours is ready to go. So that's what you got. Definitely, man. I can understand that. Hey. I got another question. Here you go. Okay. Day seven. Good day. Um, I suffer from a um, hernia, um, an active hernia. Okay. I, I tell you the truth, I have no funds or whatever like this, but um, I'm in touch with my body so that I have been able to control it myself. Um, I walk around with a trust belt to um, to keep actually keep my guts in. <laughs> um, uh, is there any type of way that I can do something about this without a surgery type thing, or is it something that I don't have to have a surgery for? Let me uh, pull some data on it. If you could send me uh, your email address either through Facebook or through the resistance, I can pull something on it. Anything that I don't generally have all the knowledge about, um, I always research. I know I, I don't I don't know any methods that don't cost anything, but from my understanding, the blood purifier. And uh, for me, uh, some other people that I've seen that had a situation were able to move a lot of the, the actually, hold on, you said a hemorrhoid or a hernia? Hernia. Okay. Okay. So I'm thinking of the, the blood purifier in relation to hemorrhoid. Um, to the hernia, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to pull some, some data on that to see if there is some type of... Uh, that there's some type of way to to correct the situation. I don't have really much data on the hernia situation. Even from another, because it's actually, it's not related to really the body, it's more related to, I mean, it's not related to the actual uh, chemical system of the body, it's more related to the strain that's put on the body and the actual damage of the tissue, et cetera. So the only thing that really works in that area is like a, a regeneration of the cell tissue. And I can go in the regeneration of the cell tissue that's really hidden within basically the activation of the pineal gland and being able to visualize re-stimulating your body to be able to get into that type of vibration or frequency from what I've understood and I would really like to be uh, a lot more open about it. But the reality is that there's, really, there's really only one element that I've seen that has the ability to take a person that has no prior spiritual real understanding about how to raise energy and actually raise their energy for that moment. Um, what that would still do for a hernia, I don't believe it would even be positive for a better lack of words because the level of energy will even push strain on the hernia. You see what I mean? So I have to really kind of look around it a little bit more and, and see uh, what kind of information I can come up with on something like that. Because uh, I'm a strong believer in um, you can heal yourself internally if you're that in touch with your with yourself. For sure, I mean you definitely can. And what I would, I know, I know most people when they ask me something like that, they know that I'm going to give them the straight up like make it happen tomorrow type answer, and so that's really how I answer things. React. I mean, the person, the mind over the matter is the key. What I've been really working with a lot is I've been working with these flat files that came from space of the satellite that they have out there. There's a torrent that's available on uh, Pirate Bay. Like I said, if you can email me, I'll send you the link. Um, those sounds seem to project some real type of atmosphere that is in the universe, and I've been using those sounds to push through a lot of the conflict of sphere is going to put things in order within my own consciousness. So hopefully we can get those up on the website and you can take those out, check those out. Well, thank you so much. No doubt. All praise to the most high. All right. Okay, so um, 
we are about 15 more minutes, uh, seven more minutes, eight more minutes in the show. And so what I'm going to do also is uh, I'm going to talk just a little bit about what we are rolling out here. Because the reality is, is that the more people that we have involved in this world, period, and to awaken to this, the better off we'll be. And a lot of times the way that we're presenting information has everything to do with that. If the information has to be dissected by someone who has common sense and a really deep intuition and, and spiritual guide, et cetera, then of course that doesn't appear to be applicable for everyone. So what we're launching now is we're going to be launching a lifestyle program which actually allows us to tackle this from multiple angles. The, re the reason is because I just don't feel like personally that the resistance is reaching enough people and it can do better. And I realized that had a lot to do with, again, how applicable we are to this society and what they're actually experiencing. Once you do get yourself into an activated position, then you're looking for definitely something to do and something to change in a major way. And that's what I was saying, uh, that you can activate and you'll still be here, but your ideas of what you can accomplish will be much more vaster and there'll be nothing stopping that from occurring. And that's really a lot of the hidden stories that are going on in this world right now are many individuals that have done fantastic things that you'll never really even hear about. Stop thinking that the world is as big as your scope of understanding and seeing in, et cetera. There are things that never get broadcasted and are never seen and are never pushed. And in, in that vein, that's also why we have to force certain things out that may not get syndication. Like, if at this point, we've contacted every single major radio show, uh, from Project Camelot to Red Ice Productions, et cetera, just asking for an interview to present some of this information to them. Even uh, we contacted Nori, George Nori with Coast to Coast AM, and even got emails back from them that they would take a look at it. And uh, and then the next night they just have someone on that is just, um, you know, completely off base. And so we're realizing that whatever is going on within those circles, it's definitely not friendly to the resistance at this point for whatever reason. So it becomes important for us to make the next plan, which is we're bypassing a lot of what's going on in the, um, I would just call it the pop chakra world. I got a chance to sit down and listen to the Deepak Chopper show because he's on Blog Talk Radio. And I'm like, goodness, man, I think I almost fell asleep. I don't know. I think the Reddit channel was more interesting. I mean, it's just the reality. How could you bring information of dissension and activation and call yourself the evangelist, evangelist, et cetera, but still not be talking about anything to do with activation of this planet? This is where we have to work to clean this kind of thing up. This is the same thing as making the body exercise as you challenge the members of the society to either produce something or to sharpen up their intellect and sharpen up their themselves to produce something that is going to push the society in the direction that it's going to go. So we're going to be doing that. I think uh, I'm a little, uh, I won't have it, but a lot of the information that's been coming across, I've been wanting to share that with people in a more interesting way. Like this radio only allows me to just kind of talk to you, and it's not a good bridge to me because it doesn't have much support. And I was noticing how you can take all of um, the terminology that's used in building and all sorts of things and take it apart and actually learn how to structure your life with it. So when you're saying, I'm going to build a bridge, when you say that the bridge needs support, support from a level like you have to build other lattice work in there to actually keep the bridge stable. And that's what I mean by this information. When I'm giving it to you, I have to put more work or woodwork and lattice work in it to make it stable. And the only way that I can do that is through not only this verbal channel, but also through uh, visual. And so we want to bolt on that and then also seeing me in person. So we're going to be bolting that on in the next two weeks. Like I said, uh, a couple of people are coming down and definitely going to be hooking up with the resistance in Costa Rica and we're going to be doing some things. So we have about three more minutes left in the show. I did want to let everyone know if you do have any type of questions, you can type it in the chat box now, but, you know, it's only three more minutes. I think we had an excellent show, especially the first part. Most of what I needed to say actually got out then. 
I did want to mention one thing. Income versus outcome. In versus out. Okay? And out is the external world. So outcome is the external world. Income, which everyone loves, they love the currency, is internal. All of the secrets that are necessary anyway to get to a higher state of consciousness was talked about last show and the show before and the show before. If you just listen at what's being said, all of the secrets are there. It's funny because every time I have a show, even though we talk about new stuff, I for some reason see myself encompassing all of the knowledge that we've learned that's important still all within that same show, just so that if a person only hears one show, then what's in that show is enough to take them to that higher state of consciousness so that they can experience that extension. But I will tell you, we're already experiencing it. And now I'm just going to do my best to show people more the in-house experience of what it's like to be activated and running around the dimension and in the real-time level of how we're going to morph this reality into what it can be. And that, that's really what, what we're dealing with. And I'll just say this last thing also. If you want to understand what negativity is, negativity is more like oxygen before you light the fire. And you know how they say that fire and oxygen, like if oxygen is in a room and then fire enters it, then the whole room blazes up. That's what negativity has done to the environment where there's so much of it that the moment that the catalyst starts, then it just ignites. It literally goes from being asleep to being awake. Like they're calling to operate the 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 whole movement that's going on around the world and mainly in the United States. They're calling that uh, the America Awakening. <laughs> okay, they can call it what they want. And they're playing because they are, as I said, they're playing with it. But we're going to really take it all away. So those that are listening to things like this will definitely be prepared. You know, this is all about the energy. You know, it's going to happen anyway. What you need to ask yourself, as like I said, the tune of today, are you completely out of duality? Can you command your body and it obey? That's the thing. When you, if your body is still in duality with you and you tell it to do something, then it won't do it. It's like, ah, I'm not going there. I'm not going to get up. Five o'clock. Why? But this is uh, what you have to do for yourself. Challenge yourself in some type of way or another, and you'll get the result. Center that around the area that you know need the healing, and then that's where you can get your healing from. Again, thank you for talking. Uh, <laughs> thank you for talking. Thank you for calling in, and thank you for all those that did call in. And um, I also wanted to say, those who are hanging up on the line, if you do listen to the message and press one, it does allow our show to have a better rank, and that allows the show to go out to more people. Thank you for tuning in to the Universal Current.